Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm happy because the sun is shining, the cherry blossom tree in my garden is out, looking for all the world like a wedding dress, and soon I'm going away on holiday to Italy in a camper van. All my storytelling friends have been helping out recording stories so I can leave them with Super Great David to play for you while I'm away for a couple of weeks. This week's story is told by Nadine Wilde Palmer. It's from Greece and it's an Aesop's fable, which means it's very old and it's been passed from mouth to ear, from mouth to ear for thousands of years. It's about a clever crow. Did you know that magpies, ravens and crows are all part of one of the most intelligent bird families known as corvids? They might not look as stunning as a swan or a parrot, but they've got big brains and heaps of cleverness. In this story, Crow uses his brains to solve a little problem. Before we begin, I wonder if you know what a group of crows is called. A group of something is a collective noun, like a group of whales or dolphins is called a pod of whales. So, what is a group of crows called? Have a think about that while I have a quick word with the grown-ups. Hi guys! I'm on the lookout for some brave, curious and silly explorers to join me on an adventure. Well, let's put it this way. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to bounce, bounce, bounce along inside a giant bubble? How about a hike in a tropical jungle? Or what goes on in a top secret superhero lair? Watch out for flying on the bar! Is this a yes, yes, yes? Yeah! I'm Connie, Chief Adventurer at Armchair Adventures, a super fun and a little bit bonkers podcast for kids aged 6 to 10. Each episode is a brand new adventure and you're invited. What makes it super special is that I've jam-packed it full of sing and move along fun. You can listen wherever you get your podcasts. Where will your next armchair adventure take you? Hello, super great kids. I'm back. Did you know the collective noun for crows? Well, I'll tell you. It's a murder of crows. Isn't that strange? And a group of owls is called a parliament of owls. And a group of bees is called a bike of bees. And one of my favourites, a group of sharks is called a shiver of sharks. Honestly, I'm not kidding. I wonder if it's called a shiver because sharks make you shiver in fear when you see one, especially if they're swimming in the same sea as you. Anyway, back to the story about the crow. Are you ready? Let's give a warm welcome to Nadine. Hello, my name is Nadine Wild Palmer and I love stories. I love telling them, reading them, listening to them and sharing them with other people. Let's have a story, shall we? Are you ready? Let's switch on our imaginations, click and power up all those beautiful images in your minds. Brrr, bing! Beak open, story fly out! Picture this. It was a very, very, very hot summer's day. One of those ones in midsummer where you just want to run around under a cold sprinkler, have a hose fight, jump in a pool, or drink an icy cold glass of your favourite drink. Well, that's just what the main character in this story wanted a nice, cool drink of water. And this character 
was a crow. The crow was called Mr Ink, for he was the darkest shade of black. This also meant that he was extra hot, as the colour black absorbs the rays of the sun and turns them into heat. So he was sweltering, boiling, practically on fire. Oh, how he longed for that refreshing relief from some cold water. You can just imagine it now, can't you? The cold, fresh water trickling down your throat. Well, that was exactly how Mr Ink the Crow felt. Desperately thirsty, in need of refreshment. And so, because crows don't have houses, well, not like the ones that we live in anyway, he went in search of a drink all across the arid, which means very dry, countryside. And as he did so, a song began to trickle through his mind, like his desire for a cool shower of rain. The song went something like this. Ground is cracked, the leaves are dry, there's not a cloud up in the sky. Come rain and wash this world alive, we need more than hot sun to survive. After Mr Ink the Crow had finished flying around looking for a lake or a stream, a river or even a puddle, he came to rest on a branch outside a pale blue house. He was oh so very tired and about to close his eyes to get a little snooze in when he spotted a jug on a window ledge of the pale blue house just by an open window. The jug had a bulbous base with a long neck and a small opening at the top. He prepared his wings for flight and stretched them wide, leaping into the air and swooping down to the window ledge where he landed and looked inside the jug. And do you know what was inside it? Go on, take a guess. That's right. Water! He called as loud as if he'd struck gold and the happy crow tried to stick his beak in to see if he could get a taste of that cool, refreshing drink. But the jug was not full enough, or his beak was too short. Either way, the water was all at the bottom of that bulbous space, and he couldn't reach it. So he sat there for a while and thought. He thought and he thought. He thought and he thought some more. And then, ping, he had an idea. First, he thought about breaking the top of the jug off with his sharp beak. And as he was about to get to work with his pecking, he realised that perhaps this wasn't such a good idea. For if he were to succeed, then perhaps small sharp shards of the ceramics would end up in the water below in the base of the jug, and that would be very dangerous. No, no, he'd have to think of another idea. So he sat there, and he thought, and he thought, and then he thought some more. His second thought was about tipping the jug over, but he soon realised that if he were to do that, the water would be lost and soak into the ground, and even if he were quick enough to get down and have a small sip, it would never be enough. So Mr Ink the Crow sat and he thought, and he thought some more. He had so many ideas. One was to stick his head in the jug and then tip it over his entire body, but what if his head was to get stuck? No, no, that wouldn't work. One other idea was to fly high into the air, as high as he could go, and then drop the jug and hope that he could catch some of the falling droplets on its way down, although he was worried that he might hurt someone. So Mr Ink sat in that long, hot afternoon, and he thought and he thought and he thought some more. Then, sitting there, looking at the pebbles on the path to the house, he had an idea. Ding! He flip-flapped over the pebbles and began to collect them one by one in his beak. And he plopped them into the water. And this is the sound that it made with every single pebble. Plip-plop splash. Plip-plop splash. Can you help me? Plip-plop splash. Plip-plop splash. And again. Plip-plop splash. Plip-plop splash. And he kept doing this for quite some time. And do you know what happened to the water? It went higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and higher up the jug until, ta-da! It was high enough for Mr Ink the Crow to take a nice, cool drink. <coughs> and it was so refreshing. Lucky Mr Ink the Crow.
he drank every last drop of that cool, refreshing water. Clever Mr. Ink. He was so happy and refreshed. And as he sat on his window ledge, he noticed that the clouds had begun to roll over. And so, sitting there contented, satisfied and happy, he sang his song to encourage the rain so that all his friends could have a drink too. Do you remember it? Why not join in with me? Perhaps his friends will join in too. Ready, steady, go. Ground is cracked, the leaves are dry, there's not a cloud up in the sky. Come rain and wash this world alive, we need more than hot sun to survive. One more time, all together. The ground is cracked, the leaves are dry, there's not a cloud up in the sky. Come rain and wash this world alive, we need more than hot sun to survive. And just when Mr Ink the Clever Crow was getting thirsty again with all that singing, do you know what happened? Yes, you guessed it. Plip, plop, splash. Plip, plop, splash. It began to rain, softly at first, and then more and more and more until there were lots and lots of puddles all over the ground. Hurrah! Three calls from Mr Ink the Clever Crow. Cra 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 All the crows that he knew in the area gathered around in delight as they hopped and splashed and drank in all the puddles. Plip plop splash, plip plop splash went the rain, and so did all of the crows. Join me one last time. Plip plop splash, plip plop splash. They danced and sang together in the rain. And as for Mr. Ink the Crow. Well, he drank and he drank and he splished and he splashed and he plip-plopped all about until he was good and cool and his feathers shone like black pebbles. Then he shook himself dry, opened his wings and off he flew. Did you like that story? It's a good one, isn't it? That story also has a moral, which is something that teaches us how to be or live or behave in the world. So we might say that the moral of this story is... If you're determined to do something, you can usually find a way to make it happen. Or as some people put it, where there's a will, there's a way. And away he flew. Now that story is for you. Goodbye, Mr Ink. Thank you, Nadine. I particularly like the song in that story. It's a shame that crows don't sound anything like you, Nadine, when they sing. But hey-ho, they get away with all sorts of tricks instead. Now, it's time to have a dig into my bag of happies and say a big thank you to some of you owlets who've been flying into our nest and supporting our podcast. <laughs> and hello to owlets Torin, who is just five, and Alvin, who is two. Torin came to our live show in London with his mum, and Torin particularly enjoys dragon stories and scary stories. Well, Torin, I hope you enjoyed our May scary story about the man-eating dragon, the Nucker. If you were brave enough to listen, that is. Those dragon noises made by Jason Buck were just terrifying. And hello to Owlet Leona, or Ona as her friends call her, who is six. Ona has never missed an episode. She's been listening since she was four. Ona lives on a farm in Burlington, Wisconsin in the US with her cats Finnegan and Captain Nemo and Red the Barn Cat. Oh, and a new puppy called Sienna. Lucky you having so many animals to enjoy, Leona. And hello to Owlet's four-year-old Atlas and Apollo, who recently turned six, from Hawthorne in California. They also like the super great scary stories, and they say that the scary stories could be even scarier. Is this month's scary story scary enough for you about the Nucker Dragon? And thank you for your brilliant pictures of El Cangrejo, the Crab King. 
and Molly and the Leprechaun. Oh, and Baba Yaga. I loved all the little details and the humour in your pictures. And thanks to those of you who've posted kind reviews on Apple Podcasts. It puts a bounce in our step and a song in my heart to read them. Thanks to subscribers Anastasia and her mum and to Candy Cush and to 74 Manatee and to Katnius26 and to Wolvesy Clo. All of you in the US. Now, lots of you sent in pictures of our stories, which we've posted on our Facebook page this week. We're receiving lots of lovely pictures. We enjoy seeing them all. Sadly, we don't have space to say thank you on the podcast for all of them. But here are our pick of the week. Thanks to Roisin from Beckenham in the UK, who came to our recent show and drew a super great crocodile picture of Ngwenya and the crocodile while listening to the live story. It's super great, Roisin. Thank you. And thanks to five-year-old Adam from Springfield in Virginia in the US. Adam drew a marvellous, colourful picture of the Chinese story, The Four Dragons, all dancing around in the sea and the sky. Just magical. Thank you, Adam. And thanks to five-year-old Saoirse from Peterborough in Canada, who is a big Baba Yaga fan. Saoirse has sent us a very fun picture of Baba Yaga on her broomstick. Hello, too, to her little brother, River, and to Grandma, who also enjoy listening to the stories. And finally, thanks to Samantha in Vancouver in Washington State, who is a huge Nancy fan. Samantha has sent us a fabulous picture of a Nancy and brother Tiger and sister Chicken at the market. It's super great. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see these drawings, they're all on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories do send in your pictures for us to share on facebook with other story lovers if you'd like to send a picture either attach it to our facebook messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website at supergreatkidsstories.com in the meantime keep telling your stories and singing your songs see you soon This story was recorded at Wardour Studios in London.